El Nino is not a new phenomenon, and its steady has evolved over time to the present day. It is not an ocean current or a unique whim of nature. El Nino is a cyclical event capable of altering the climate and many other parameters around the world. According to experts, following the initial signs also reported by the Copernicus Mission Monitoring System, the Copernicus Mission is an Earth observation program developed by the European Space Agency that aims to monitor our planet, including information on climate, vegetation, air, and water quality. Among other aspects, we can now say that El Nino is returning, and it is likely to be a major return, because its disturbances could combine with ongoing climate change. The fear, in particular, is that a very strong El Nino event in 2024 could make this the hottest year ever recorded on our planet. We are Astro Geeks. If you're passionate about astronomy or just curious about the wonders of the universe, this is the place for you. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our videos and help us by liking the video. This is very important for the start of our project. Together, let's explore the far reaches of the universe. El Nino is a climatic phenomenon that occurs every few years in the Pacific Ocean. It is characterized by the abnormal warming of surface waters off the west coast of South America, which causes changes in atmospheric circulation and affects the climate in many regions of the world. El Nino can lead to droughts, floods, storms, fires, and other extreme weather events. Many years ago, this phenomenon was less violent because it occurred on a planet with lower temperatures and not yet damaged by the climate crisis. Now it's a different story. We can expect new heat records, although it's difficult to predict what will actually happen. How does El Nino form and what are its consequences? To understand this, we first need to know the standard conditions of the Pacific Ocean. Under normal conditions, the trade winds blow from east to west, pushing the surface waters towards Asia and Australia. This creates a pressure difference between the two sides of the ocean, higher pressure in the east and lower pressure in the west. This difference strengthens the trade winds, which in turn push even more water westwards. This creates a circular current called a walker cell. The walker cell has two main effects. On the one hand, it cools the surface waters in the east, promoting the rise of nutrient-rich deep waters that sustain marine life and fisheries. On the other hand, it warms the surface waters in the west, creating a mass of warm water called the warm pool, which extends from Indonesia to the islands of the Central Pacific. This mass of warm water heats the air above it, creating clouds and rain. However, from time to time, the trade winds weaken or change direction, allowing the mass of warm water to move eastwards. This marks the beginning of El Nino. El Nino disturbs the walker cell, reducing the pressure difference between the two sides of the ocean and further weakening the trade winds. The warm water spreads towards South America, suppressing the rise of deep, nutrient-rich waters, leading to a decrease in marine life and fishing. It has now been established that El Nino has global effects, altering atmospheric circulation patterns and influencing the climate in other regions. For example, El Nino can lead to milder winters in North America and Europe, but also to more storms in California and the Gulf of Mexico. In addition, El Nino can affect agricultural production, human health, biodiversity, and the economies of many countries. The tropical Pacific Ocean is so vast that an increase in surface temperature of just 1 or 2 degrees is more than enough to disrupt the global climate. A slightly warmer ocean evaporates more water, warming the atmosphere and fueling tropical storms. Convective movement, a form of heat transfer, then transports this additional energy to colder regions to the north and south on both sides of the equator. The Earth's rotation also spreads this energy eastwards. The net result is a generalized redistribution of heat and humidity. In climate terminology, El Nino is an excellent example of the teleconnection of global climate systems. El Nino's warm current usually lasts between 9 and 12 months, but it is not uncommon for its cycle of activity to persist for up to 18 months. 
It usually peaks between December and February, but can occur at any time of the year. El Nino got its name in the 19th century. At that time, fishermen in northern Peru noticed that almost every year, towards the end of December, close to Christmas, there was an increase in the temperature of the seawater. They attributed this warming to the arrival of a warm ocean current, which they called the El Nino current in reference to the baby Jesus. For them, it's a question of economic survival. The vast shoals of anchovies on which their livelihood depends prefer colder waters and disappear when El Nino arrives. However, we must be careful and understand that El Nino is not an isolated event, but part of a natural cycle called ENSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation, which alternates between warming, El Nino, and cooling, La Nina, phases in the Pacific Ocean. La Nina is the opposite of El Nino. It occurs when the trade winds are stronger than normal, pushing more cold water eastwards and more warm water westwards. Therefore, El Nino is in fact a complex and fascinating phenomenon that shows us how the climate results from a delicate balance between the ocean and the atmosphere, and how variations in one part of the world can have repercussions in another. El Nino also challenges us to better understand the mechanisms that regulate the climate and to predict its future changes so that we can adapt and mitigate its negative impacts. And now you're probably asking yourself, what's in it for me? The reason is simple. According to hundreds of experts, in 2024 the world could witness an unprecedented climatic event that could have catastrophic consequences for the Earth's climate and life. According to the latest forecasts, 2023 and especially 2024 could see a very strong El Nino event, potentially setting a record for average global temperatures and bringing the planet closer than ever to a level of warming that scientists warned could be detrimental to life on Earth. According to some estimates, 2024 could be the first year in which global temperatures exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, a threshold considered critical to avoid the most serious impacts of climate change. This means that the world could experience irreversible effects such as melting polar ice, rising sea levels, ocean acidification, loss of biodiversity, an increase in infectious diseases, and reduced food security. In addition, the strong El Nino event could alter long-term climate patterns, changing the distribution of energy between the tropics and the polar regions, influencing the thermohaline circulation of the oceans and modifying the biogeochemical cycles of carbon, nitrogen, and water. These effects can have repercussions on biodiversity, agriculture, human health, and global security. The catastrophic consequences of exceeding the 1.5 degrees Celsius limit are numerous and interconnected. Some of the main ones are The melting of polar ice and high-altitude glaciers, resulting in rising sea levels and the loss of habitat for many animal and plant species. It is estimated that with a temperature rise of 1.5 degrees, sea levels could rise by around 0.4 meters by 2100, while a rise of 2 degrees would result in a rise of 0.6 meters. This would put coastal populations and infrastructure at risk, exposed to phenomena such as erosion, saltwater intrusion, flooding, and storms. Ocean acidification occurs when carbon dioxide absorbed by water forms carbonic acid, lowering the ocean's pH. This process harms marine organisms that form calcium carbonate shells or skeletons, such as corals, mollusks, and crustaceans. Loss of terrestrial and aquatic biodiversity occurs when species are unable to adapt to climate change and lose their habitats or food sources. With a temperature increase of 1.5 degrees, 6% of insects, 8% of plants, and 4% of vertebrates could lose more than half of their climatic range by 2100. With an increase of 2 degrees, these percentages would rise to 18%, 16%, and 8% respectively. Reduced food security occurs when climate change reduces the availability and quality of food, directly affecting crops and livestock, as well as indirectly affecting supply and distribution chains. 
with a temperature increase of 1.5 degrees, global wheat production could decrease by 2%, while an increase of 2 degrees could lead to a decrease of 7%. Similarly, global corn production could decrease by 7% with a temperature increase of 1.5 degrees and by 12% with an increase of 2 degrees. This would put the food and nutritional security of millions of people at risk. Another grim consequence of a particularly strong El Nino is an increase in disease. As temperatures rise, viruses reproduce more quickly in hosts such as mosquitoes. Mosquitoes also bite more often in the heat. Heavy rainfall creates more breeding sites for insects, as does drought, when people store more water in accessible containers. Research by the World Health Organization found that drought conditions associated with El Nino over two decades increased malaria cases in Colombia and Venezuela by more than a third. These are just a few examples of the catastrophic consequences that could result from exceeding the global warming limit of 1.5 degrees by 2024. These are scenarios that we cannot afford to face either environmentally or socially and economically. It is therefore urgent to take action now to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and limit global warming to a maximum of 1.5 degrees. Only in this way can we protect our planet and our future. And how can we deal with El Nino? El Nino is a natural phenomenon that we cannot prevent or control. However, we can try to monitor its development and prepare for its effects, both individually and collectively. To monitor El Nino, we can use various observation and forecasting tools, such as satellites, ocean buoys, climate models, and statistical indicators. These tools allow us to follow the evolution of oceanic and atmospheric conditions and anticipate the impacts of El Nino in different regions of the world. To prepare for its effects, we can adopt various adaptation and mitigation measures, such as water resource management, crop and livestock protection, disease and disaster prevention, international cooperation, and humanitarian assistance. These measures allow us to reduce the vulnerability of populations and ecosystems to the negative effects of El Nino and take advantage of the positive opportunities it can offer. However, these actions are not enough if we do not address the underlying causes of climate change, which make El Nino more frequent and intense. To do this, we must reduce greenhouse gas emissions and promote sustainable and resilient development. Only in this way can we prevent events like El Nino from becoming increasingly dangerous for the future of the planet and humanity. Regardless of how this plays out, one thing is certain, we will be facing extreme temperatures as early as next year. For those, there's nothing left to do. If you learned something new from this video, don't forget to support our channel. Click on the subscribe button below to join our community of astronomy enthusiasts and not miss any of our videos. And, of course, if you enjoyed this video and the information we shared, please leave us a like, as this really helps us to keep bringing you interesting and intriguing content like this. Thank you for joining us here at Astro Geeks. Together, let's keep exploring the wonders of the cosmos. Until next time, everyone, and keep your eyes on the sky.